camera is very precariously perched. I'm back. I'm in Portland now. It's uh, only 98 degrees today. Anyways, the trip was good. It was nice to get out of town. I uh, feel a little bit um, reset, as it were. My friends bought a house, and the rest of their family is also going to be buying a couple of houses out there. Probably won't be for another few months before moving actually starts happening, but at least I know I have a place I can go if I need to get out of Portland for a while. Because they're all getting houses that have like seven or eight bedrooms or something. I, I don't know. There's going to be plenty of space. Okay, so. Last video, we were at the Airbnb, went to the car show and all that stuff. The plan was to go out to Coeur d'Alene and then hit up a campground. I thought we were going out into the middle of the woods. It turns out we were going to the Silverwood RV park slash campground. So I was thinking, oh, cool. We're going to have, uh, you know, accessible showers, theme park. Uh, there's going to be bathrooms, all that stuff. Turns out they had bathrooms. They kind of worked. Like I mentioned on the live stream, showers were not really uh, accessible at all. I did make one of them work, however. After several days of sunscreen building up, I was like, I will be taking a shower tonight. I don't care how it happens, but I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> I always have these ideas in my head. I'm gonna bring my laptop with me and I got the camera and I can just edit as I go along. Yeah. <laughs> when it's hot out and there's chaos and everyone has their kids running around and nobody knows what we're really doing, <laughs> planning ahead kind of goes out the window. I filmed a bunch of stuff with my phone and the GoPro. Got a bunch of those clips here I'm gonna play now. And then we're gonna head back to Portland uh, driving, uh, road trip, I don't know what I'm saying. I, apparently it's Tuesday now. I lost a day. Yesterday, or was it the day before? It was 115 when we got back. Yeah, yesterday was 116 outside. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, turns out I don't function. The house got up to about 87 degrees, I think 89 at one point. The mini split system in there was like, done! And it like shut off for 90 minutes. I don't know if it was defrosting or what, but it was at like 4 p.m. And by that time, it couldn't catch up again. But anyhow, here's some clips of assorted things. Hopefully you enjoy. Driving through the countryside. Isn't that cool with countryside? Just like four minutes away from I know. downtown or whatever. Everything's mostly cleaned up. Oh, I guess there's this. Found the van. left the Airbnb and we're gonna head over to the campground. We all have to go to our various places. I've got to go to a Rite Aid to pick up some stuff from my Amazon locker. Tried to get some stuff delivered to the house, but for some reason the postal service said no. <laughs> um, so that got sent back to Amazon. My other friends looking at more houses and the other vehicle, actually the two vehicles, <laughs> we got four now, are headed to a Costco. So I'm gonna hit up the Rite Aid, get my Amazon stuff, and then we're gonna go to Costco. I think we're getting some pizzas, and then we're going to a friend of a friend of a friend's place to watch some rips with sheetrock off the walls, then probably look at one more house, then the campground. It's been a very exciting trip, and it's about halfway done. I don't think I'm moving out here, but if I did, I might get an apartment in one of these buildings just on a trial basis. This is kind of by the downtown area or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. It's a really cool area, that's for sure. But, I have to leave all the people I know in Portland. Well, I suppose if all the people I know in Portland are also leaving. I don't know, whatever. Thoughts swirling around in the head. 
All right, we got our stuff here. Um, by the way, what I was ordering was a wireless speaker mic. Well, not wireless, but a, a speaker mic for that other radio. I've got the uh, Baofeng with me, but I didn't bring the charger. And hang on, let me put this somewhere. And it's hard to use that thing when it's mounted to the dashboard when I'm driving, so we got one of these. The Baofeng has one of these, but the speaker is the wrong ohms or impedance or something, so I don't know, whatever. Um, I'm gonna head over to Costco, meet up with my friends, and we're gonna test that thing, and then burnouts. And now the question is, where are they? Usually pretty easy to spot with a giant truck and flag. Yeah, it looks like I beat them here, they just pulled in. Focus. Why won't you focus? This place is a zoo, we're gonna park across the street. We dropped off the relevant people at the front door. <laughs> it's a sea of humanity. This is not designed for large trucks. Turns out it's the wrong microphone. The spacing between these is incorrect. Oh well. <laughs> I think I've got my I've got my UV5R down here, I think. By the way, $23 handheld transceiver. I've had it for years. This one has a speaker mic that is the correct pitch, but I think the impedance of the amplifier in there is incorrect because this is super quiet when it's plugged in. So yeah, I don't know, I'll figure something out. The, the problem, the thing is, when I'm driving, I can grab this and I can hold it in my hand while I've got my arm in the tri-pin. So it's a lot easier to talk as opposed to having to like reach up here or over here or something. But eh, I'll figure something out. By the way, this is a drive through coffee shop. How revolutionary is that? But anyways, I was using this thing on the way out of here, but I forgot to bring the charger for this. And you have to use the cradle to charge this one. This one also has the contacts on the back, but it has a micro USB port as well. Said that weird, micro USB. So I can just plug this thing in and it'll charge back up. No extra stuff needed, which is kind of handy. Um, this is one I got on Amazon. It's Radioddity GS5B. Um, just your generic Chinese, you know, handheld transceiver, but it has Bluetooth programming, which is kind of cool. And it's stupid loud. The speaker in this thing is outstanding. It's got dual transmit buttons, uh, dual standby, so you can set up two different frequencies to monitor, and depending on which button you press, it's linked to that correlated channel. So that's kind of handy if you've got multiple talk groups. It claims it's a DMR. I don't think you can run digital radio talk groups, though. I haven't tried it. Um, probably try that when I get back to Portland with one of the work radios, but um, for now, it seems to work pretty good. Battery life doesn't seem super stellar, but again, micro USB under this flap. Ah. Phone with her, and she said they're still waiting on the pizzas, so something. Okay, we're we're waiting on the pizzas to be made yeah, over there. Good. Do you want? Will you want any uh, pepperoni pizza or a hot dog or calzone or any of the other things out there? But yeah, super handy when we've got four vehicles running around. By the way, we are all licensed. You have to be licensed to use this frequency or a ham transceivers in general. I'm not gonna go into that here, but we are following the rules when it comes to how you're supposed to use these things and stuff. But yeah, they work great. Yeah, see, you just drive your car into this mini mart and they'll give you coffee. It's awesome. Eh, need to clean the lens. Today it's kind of been all over the place. We're, um, is it still? So today's been a bit crazy. We went and visited a friend of a friend for a while. Then we went back to downtown Coeur d'Alene to the splash pad to meet uh, another friend's friend's friend and their kids. And then we came back out here. Uh, we're headed to Silverwood, by the way. And we checked into the campground and then we went to get food. Oh no, I had to go to Walmart. Then went to get food. But there's gonna be like an hour wait for the food, so we came to this Wendy's right here. But then the inside was closed because they can't find people to work in this like area. 
there's a ton of jobs and there's nobody to fill them basically. Um, so the dining room is closed. So we went to this uh, Mexican place over here, got some burritos, got an extra burrito for later that's in the back. Now we're finally heading to the campground at Silverwood. The plan is I'm gonna throw a futon mattress on the floor back here. It's not blatantly obvious how that's gonna work right now, but I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I need to clean off my chair though. I was running around in the gravel and it's uh, a little bit gross, which is probably a futile effort because the campground is gravel. Anyways, I'm gonna clean my chair. I, I had to run over to this Target to get a power strip because I have to run my breathing machine and charge my chair. I did bring 75 feet of extension cord, so that's good, but I need a power strip. And I ate my burrito and then went over to Target and now I'm meeting them back here. They're parked right there. Um, and my friend's brother and their family decided to wait in the super long line and get their burgers. So they're probably done eating by now and then we're all gonna reconvene at the campground at Silverwood. And yeah, so <laughs> there you go. I think I covered all the bases. I'll show you a little bit later on. Well, it's gonna get dark here. we will show you in the morning, but I'll show you the setup how I'm going to attempt to sleep in this van and we'll see how that works. Okay, um, I think this is the first time I've legit been camping since I've been in a chair full time. And uh, it's not exactly what I remember. Um, oh, I need my hat. So we're about ready to head over into the park, Silverwood. And uh, yeah, I'm about to record some more clips later. It's a little bit chaotic at the moment, but um, yeah, something. I'll fill you in more later. Oh, we go under the highway. I know, I thought that was a little bit weird of the way they did it. Maybe they make more money than the city does. For yeah. Infrastructure. One should hope there's an elevator. That's what they have to, I mean. Read and obey the rules. Excellent. That'll do. Do you think they're gonna make me wear a life jacket? <laughs> That's a good point. We're going on this ride, Jimmy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Let's go. Look at all the people that moved up here. I don't even like to drive at Fort Lady. Even Batman knows that. But I ain't seen her utility belt today. Itself. It is possible to camp in this van, but should probably buy a school bus to convert into a motorhome. The floor, like that little bump back there works good, throwing the futon mattress on the floor. But, uh, okay, so the process. I back my chair in and I back it right up here to the steering wheel. And then before that, I had my friend put the futon mattress back here, sort of tacoed up or folded. And then I back in here, pull it down onto the floor, and then I can flop down on the floor and sleep. 
getting back up is the reverse of that. Slither back up into my chair, fold the thing in half, kind of shove it over there. And then he'll come back over and throw it out there on the picnic table. Doable for a couple of days, but more than that, uh, yes, lessons have been learned. Oh, by the way, the campground is giving me a refund for one night. That's just sort of a, uh, sorry about the inconvenience of us telling you there's accessible showers, but there actually aren't. I did manage to take a shower last night, however. I got one of the, uh, they've got a bunch of patio furniture out front of the general store here in this campground. And I just grabbed one of those chairs and threw it in the shower. And, uh, that seemed to work. So, anyways. Apparently allergies are a thing out here. I'm waiting for someone to bring me some Benadryl. And then we're going to start the last day in the park. Ah, these things are hot. That concludes our stay at the, oh, what is this place? Um, Silverwood RV Park. Got most of the stuff packed up in here. Got this cooler, which actually worked fairly well, except that the plug on it overheats somehow. I'm gonna have to replace this. The tip on here gets so hot that it melts things. So anyways, we got that. Finishing packing up the campsite. Um, I just need to move a few things in here and we're ready to get out of here. It is almost 8.30 in the morning. It's supposed to be 115 degrees in Portland today, which is odd because it's only going to be 108 here. <laughs> only. Um, yeah. And it would appear as though I got some sun. Lines are, yeah, you can, you can see them there pretty good. <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna get some gas and stuff and breakfast. Jimmy's fixing the hole in the ground from my lift. <laughs> All right, we've got a couple of planned stops on the way. We're stopping at a park for the kids. Then we have to get some diesel and gas a hole. And then, uh, yeah, something. I'm gonna keep an eye on this gauge right here because it's gonna get hot. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. So I just made an interesting discovery. This van has this little overhead console that shows temperature and a compass. I mean, I knew it was there, but it never clicked till like just now. Um, I think it looks weird on the GoPro, but yeah. That'll be interesting for our trip back to keep an eye on our uh, temperatures outside. Because I'm never rolling these windows down, ever. Uh, another interesting note. So my friend up there that's driving the camper slash apartment with the flag on the back, uh, they just bought a house up here. It was one of those deals where, yeah, it was expensive, but it was too good not to pass up. And it's far enough out of town that it'll be a good location. Lots of land, partially forested, partially not. So while we were running around in the theme park for the last two days, um, they're, they used my laptop and uh, did all the paperwork for, you know, mortgages and loans and all that stuff. So, yeah, I get the feeling there will be more trips to this area in my future. But anyways, I always like this area. Spent a lot of time up here. Again, I don't think I'm leaving Portland, but it's nice to know there's an escape hatch available and someone with over 4,000 square feet that will be able to accommodate me if I want to come visit for a while. Um, yeah. It, it's interesting when things just kind of happen. They knew they wanted to move and uh, it just sort of worked out. <laughs> and then as they're filling up paperwork, it's like, are we buying a house in Idaho? Is that what's going on? <laughs> so yeah, I'm super happy for them though. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be a good deal for sure. Yeah, I think everybody's everybody we talked to is moving out of Post Falls here. 
um, just because it's getting really busy. Um, so, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to look at that. And we stopped for fuel up to 92 degrees. It was, I think, 84 when we left. Uh, that's gonna keep climbing. Well, we're up to 97 degrees, still climbing. We're out on the open road here, somewhere in uh, Washington. Apparently it was 108 in Portland yesterday and it's supposed to be hotter today, so. I guess we'll see how this goes. The only person that doesn't have a large capacity cooling system is another friend behind us in the diesel Jetta. But I think those things usually do okay, so yeah, we'll see. Pit stop at the McDonald's slash Chevron, and uh, yep, that's a thing. I think we've only gone 60 miles. I think uh, we probably went another 40 miles before we got fuel, but yeah, good times. So apparently there's wildfire and it's threatening the highway. So hopefully we can make it through here before they close the road. We've been seeing it for about the last 50 miles or so, but I think we're getting pretty close to it here. It is extremely windy. That's why the camera angle's weird. I've got both hands on the steering wheel at the moment. <laughs> All right, seems like if you have a thousand gallons of bottled water anyway that you can use for fires or drinking or whatever. no play in this steering. All this movement you're seeing is me trying to keep this thing going straight down the road with the wind. It's uh, pretty aggressive out here. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> I, uh, I use my left hand with the hand controls. I got these right angle push rock controls and I use my thumb over here quite a bit to help stabilize the wheel. And then I've got a tri pin over here on the right side. I can hit the turn signal like that. But uh, yeah, this is pretty windy. There, you can see the tri pin there. Man, it is so windy out here. <laughs> All right, we're up to 108 degrees. AC is starting to have trouble keeping up, but we're doing all right. Uh, temperature gauge has not moved. I'm pretty sure it's one of those idiot gauges that. Uh, doesn't do anything until you get above like 240 or something. But yeah, anyways. Oh man. I am not used to this kind of heat. We just stopped and got Subway. Figured I'd leave the windows open. Maybe that would do something, I don't know. But so far, knock on fabric seats, the, all the fluids seem to be staying in everyone's vehicles. What's this say? So I think the thermometer in here only goes up to 109. Everyone else has seen 112 and 113 on theirs, but this one has never gone above 109. So maybe that's the maximum theoretical limit. Anyways, I got some ice water to keep in my lap, <laughs> cooling and stuff. All right, three more hours to Portland. I think this is Umatilla. I don't know, something. I think the GoPro in the windshield might have overheated. We're getting 153 degrees on the camera and 150 on the battery. Um, mental note to self, do not leave attached to windshield. Okay, so we've determined that this thing is... Not... I got 117 registering on my uh, temperature gauge. Yeah, I saw 115 on mine and I think we determined it's two degrees cool. Yeah, so you maybe heard that. Um, 117 degrees outside. And we are in the Dowels, Oregon. Anyways, stop for gas. All right, so 
my van on this last section of the trip got 13 miles to the gallon. The F350, F350 Super Duty there got 12 miles to the gallon. And our friend in the Jetta got 44.45 miles to the gallon. He used six gallons, I used 20, and he used 21. So, yeah. One of these things is not like the others. Well, we're about uh, 33 miles from Portland. Uh, running about eh, 114 degrees outside still. A lot of broken down cars on the side of the highway. Um, yeah, been an interesting trip. <laughs> Fires, lots of heat. I guess that's about it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're almost back. Yay. Wait, is that yay? No, it's not. Ah, I don't know, whatever. We're gonna be in Portland soon, whatever that means. Well, welcome back to the Fester Barn. It's uh, 115 degrees outside. I left the AC set to 70 in my place. I don't know if it can keep up with it set that high and it that hot outside, but I guess we'll find out here in a little bit. Uh, yeah. All right, let's see how hot it is in here. Oh, spider webs. Ooh, it's actually nice. Well, compared to the 114 it is outside. Um, yeah, I think this is actually doable. Oh, our dancing beaver is still over here going at it. All right, one thing we need to do, we need to turn this down from 70 to 64. In this particular case, turning it down lower will actually make more colder or air come out because this is an inverter system. So yeah, anyways, I, um, oh, solid spider webs. I got some sun. Ah, the power went out while I was gone. That's what's happening. So I got a notification from, uh, I, I do an online backup. Wait a second. Okay, I guess we're good. Um, I, uh, I do an online um, cloud backup solution, like how I turn off the lights when I turn on the camera. And I got an email saying that uh, the backup hadn't completed in three days. So that makes sense. Power turned off, computer was off. Is that just this screen or do I really, really have the raccoon eyes going on here. <laughs> Do you see the light? I have seen the light! I'm just gonna lean back, there we go. Mission accomplished, got out of Portland for a couple of weeks. So Silverwood, I mean obviously it's like for kids, theme parks and stuff, but it's not the most accessible place on planet Earth. There was only one ride I was able to go on, and that was a train that goes around the park. Which, I don't know. They, they've got a map showing all these rides being accessible, and every ride has a sign saying, Oh yeah, go this direction, you know, for uh, accessible entry or whatever. The problem is, like, let's say I'm sitting in my chair. The ride's over there by that door. And down some stairs, or up a ladder. And you have to somehow get from here to there. It's set up, like, if you're partially ambulatory, Silverwood would probably be fine, but in my case, uh, I don't know. I was just happy not being right here and just being somewhere else. Like, staring at someone else's walls for a while was definitely uh, awesome. Oh, there was one ride, however. I'm going to talk about it in the live stream on Thursday. Um, the engineering part in my brain kind of geeked out a little bit. There's a ride. It's called the Panic Plunge. You get up on this thing, they lift you up on a tower, and it just drops you. The braking mechanism on that ride kind of blew my mind a little bit. I actually went back and grabbed the thermal camera, took a whole bunch of video clips. Uh, anyway, so that's one of the things we're going to talk about in the stream on Thursday. I couldn't really put it in a video where this one's long enough. I don't know, whatever, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. I Every time I talk, I can see the... Since the sun's right here, I can see myself spinning. Okay, thanks for watching. Had a good time. I have no idea what the plans for the future are. I'm pretty sure I'm staying in Portland for now. Um, yeah, stuff and or things. I'll see you in a couple days.